Look at how interesting 10.4 is, given that CF is equal to 6 units and AB is equal to 24 units. Let's calculate, given reasons, the length of AE, right? But then before we do that interesting one, let's just go through 10.1 first. So 10.1, right? So before I start answering these questions, I like going through the question statement so that I can jot down a few keywords, right? And then let me just do that before I answer 10.1. It is that in the diagram, BE and CD are diameters. So I have diameters. Why am I writing that down? Because I know that uh, there's something special about a diameter, right? It subtends an angle of 90 degrees. And then of a circle having M as center. So I have center. Why am I interested in center? I know that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference, right? And then chord AE. So I also have chord. And what else do I also have? I have two lines that are perpendicular to each other, right? 10.1, it says that, let's give a reason why AF is equal to FE. So why AF, yes, AF here, yeah, it is equal to F E. The equals to each other because the line from center is perpendicular to the chord. So 10.1, we see that the line from uh, the center is perpendicular to the chord. If the line from the center is perpendicular to the chord, that line is going to bisect the chord, right? And that is why we see that AF is equals to F E, aka theorem number one. And then 10.2. Let's look at what 10.2 is saying. It's saying that let's determine, given reasons, uh, the size of M1 in terms of X. So where is M1? M1 is right here, right? And then now let me go and look at my keywords and see if I can determine M1 using my keywords. Uh, it has nothing to do with the diameter, so I cannot use that, right? And then now let me go to center. Okay, it's easy to see that M1 is an angle at the center. And it should be equals to twice the angle at the circumference, right? Provided they are from the same arc. So M1 is being subtended by arc CE, so to say. And then that arc CE is uh, also subtending angle A1, right? So we can go ahead and say that M1 is equals to two times A1, you know, angle at center is equals to two angle at circumference right that is our uh, 10.2 but we need m1 in terms of x right so if we find e1 in terms of x then we have m1 in terms of x so let me show you something uh a1 is in triangle a c f right uh, we have x here as you can see and here we have an angle of 90 so we can find the size of A1, right? Uh, A1 plus C plus F. This is in triangle ACF. This is equals to 180, right? Sum of angles in triangle. So A1 will be equals to 180 minus F is 90, right? So minus 90. And then C1 is X. So A1 is equals to... 90 minus x so m1 is equal to 2 multiplied by 90 minus x you know and that should be equal to 180 minus 2x so there we are we have uh, the size of m1 in terms of x and now moving to 10.3 we're almost at 10.4 now the interesting question uh, so 10.3 is saying that let's provide given reasons that ad is a tangent ad is a tangent to the circle passing through a c and f these questions can be a bit challenging right but then the best way of doing them is drawing uh, the circle through ACF so that you can have a bit of clarity, right? So let me just go ahead and try do that and see what happens. So we need a circle that is going to pass through A and then it is passing through C, it is passing through F, right? So something like that, you know, my circle doesn't look too cute, 
but that is fine it gets the job done so we need to prove that this line ad is a tangent right we need to prove that ad is a tangent right uh we know fully well that if ed is a tangent then this angle here we have a2 here let's not forget uh this angle here a2 should be equal to this angle x right why should that be true uh, that should be true because of the Tancourt theorem so if we prove that uh, a2 is equals to x then we have proved that ad will be a tangent to a circle that goes through acs right so what is the size of c the size of c is equals to x so now we just need to prove that a2 is also equals to x let's go back to our keywords we have used center let's see if we can use the code i don't see an immediate way of which we can do that right but then i'm open for correction but i can see a way where we can use the diameter let me show you how we have the diameter cd c d right and then it is subtending this entire angle oh my sketch is getting messy right now so this angle here should be 90 degrees if it's been subtended by uh cd by diameter cd right if that angle there is 90 degrees then that means that a1 plus a2 is equal to 90 degrees right but then i think we have the value of a1 we calculated it in 10.2 right 90 minus x so we're gonna have 90 minus x plus a2 being equal to 90 so a2 is equal to 90 minus 90 plus x it's easy to see that a2 is equal to x so since uh, c is equal to x and a2 is also equal to x we can go ahead and conclude that ad is indeed a tangent right to that circle that is going through a c f all right and the moment we've all been waiting for 10.4 so 10.4 we're given that c f is equal to six units so let me just get rid of all these so then we can have a bit of clarity so cf is equal to six units so we have six units here and then ab is equal to 24 units so this is uh 24 units and then let's calculate re given reasons uh the length of aa so we need uh this entire line here this entire line right um so what can we do here you know just uh post the video and try you know thinking about which approach uh, we can use to answer this question All right uh, we've already established that af is equals to fe uh, because the line from center perpendicular to the cord bisects the cord right uh, that is theorem one so af is equals to fe but at the same time, we can say that um, AB is equal to twice FM. We can say that this side here, AB, is equal to two times FM. <laughs> Why are we saying that? Why are we saying that? Uh, we have a triangle, right? A, B, E. And then in this triangle, A, B, E, FM is cutting the size of triangle a B E proportionally right so from there we can say that a B is parallel to F M but then it doesn't only cut the size of a B E proportionally it cuts the two sides into equal lengths right that is why we're now saying a B is equal to 2 F M that is from proportionality right so if a B is equal to 2 F M and we know that a B is equal to 24 then we conclude and say that fm is equal to 12 units right so we have 12 right here let me just replace this and put 12 right here and just like that we are almost done right uh, let me show you what i'm talking about cm is equal to em is equal to 18 
units right that is because they are all radiuses right radiuses are equals to each other so from m to e is 18 units right so we have 18 as our hypotenuse we have 12 as our opposite so we can find fe which is our adjacent right and then from finding fe we just have to multiply it by 2 to find ee so in triangle fme we can see that fe squared plus mf squared is equals to me squared right so what is fe that's what we're looking for so we're gonna have fe squared being equals to me squared so we have 18 squared minus mf squared which is 12 you know squared and then if you put that in your calculator you're gonna get fe being equals to 6 square root of 5 we already took square root of both sides right and then if you multiply that by 2 you're going to ultimately get ae being equals to 12 square root of 5